Hi, this is Angela with Parker's Permaculture. I wanted to make a quick part two to the video that I put out yesterday. Um, I was talking about the things that are that are going on in my life right now, and I hope you'll check out that video. And the you know very soon upcoming uh, issues that we'll have to be dealing with as a family. And it really has me thinking about applying permaculture principles to broader systems. And I know I'm always talking about this. Um, how can we take permaculture design and apply it to, to systems within our society? Permaculture is not just a set of design principles and guiding, you know, forces that you use in your garden or in designing green buildings. It is a design system that is applicable to all areas where humans interact with each other and their environment. And, you know, thinking about the failures in the American healthcare system that I am now so incredibly intimate with and thinking about the isolation of individuals and even of nuclear families within our society, it really pushes me to think, what systemic changes could we make to help all of us thrive and do better? And what are the, the kinds of factors that uh, reduce our resilience, increase the struggle for people? Like we are in America, I'm in America, Thank you to my many viewers that are not I actually have a lot of European viewers and a lot of Canadian viewers. So thank you. Um, but those of us in America, like we live in the richest country in the world. Like there's no reason any of us should be struggling and suffering like we are. There's no reason any of us should be at the end of our rope and out of resources and going bankrupt and having no access to health care. And no reason we should be feeling lonely and isolated and not sure what to do, not sure how to get out of our, our situation and in better our lives, right? But that's how many of us are. I know I've said it before, and I'm speaking from my own lived experience as a middle-aged woman, as a 43-year-old woman, but I do feel like so much of our expectations of what changes need to happen come from the minds of women who are already completely maxed out. We're often the ones who are the caregivers. We're often the ones who are immersed in the inefficiencies and the frustrations of different systems in our culture. Once you have to access caregiving for children or elders or your um, <laughs> own pursuit of your own personal health and navigating healthcare systems and educational systems, and managing a budget and you know, navigating your retirement and all of that kind of stuff, all your savings. Women are really intimately acquainted with that kind of thing. Don't tell me that men aren't. I know that a lot of, there's a lot of wonderful men who are managing all of these things as well. I just hear from my women friends that many of them are in a very similar situation to me. And so we see all of the problems in the system. We see all of the folks who are running on fumes, who either are doing jobs where they are completely maxed out and don't have the support that they need or they're they're woefully underpaid. And so the systems that they work in are struggling. And we see corporations that want to trim the budget here and there. In fact, I was talking with my sister the other day, um, you know, for her as a physician working in healthcare and just seeing the the absolute struggles of the healthcare system, where in the past, you know, doctors would get like an admin hour to catch up on their charts. Well, the corporations that run their clinic or run their hospital system that pay their CEOs $15 million a year. Oh, well, if we cut out your admin hour, you can just do your charts at home after you get home from work and we can squeeze in four more patients for you to see in the day. And the same thing, oh, well, if we just cut office staff and we have the front desk receptionist check in patients and answer all the phones, sure, patients might have to wait an hour on hold. In fact, for my dad's doctor, typically is an hour to an hour and a half on hold before I can talk to any real person. Um, we can cut some jobs, we can cut some pensions, and we can save money. And we can increase our profit for our shareholders and we can pay our CEOs bigger, fatter salaries. And that's been a real frustration for me, and it's been a frustration for my sister, obviously, as a healthcare provider. It's been a frustration for me as a patient, and also as somebody who's advocating for children and parent um, needing access to healthcare. I just see all of the ways that we are profit-driven and not people-care-driven, and how much that damages our society. So for those of us that are are those women who, who have taken on this kind of veil of hypervigilance where we can't trust these really broken, flawed systems that care about profit and not people that are 
crumbling in front of our eyes that are woefully understaffed with with employees who are maybe undertrained or who are exhausted and don't have the support that they need, but the company is still raking in a big profit. It falls on us, particularly matriarchs, homemakers, mothers, to develop this hypervigilance, to, to cloak ourselves in it. Because we know we can't trust anybody else to do the job right. We can't trust that business to file the paperwork on time. We can't trust them to fax over that thing that, um, you know, your dad's facility needs in a timely manner. So you have to show up at the office and in the middle of the day and say, hi, I'm here to pick up this paperwork because you failed to fax it for four days in a row when you said you would. Or, you know, you just constantly have to check up on everything. And that hypervigilance is extremely exhausting. It is so frustrating to feel like you can't let your guard down because nobody else is going to accomplish their job correctly and in a timely manner and everything is going to let you down. And I don't mean everything by people, I mean the system. And my friend Elizabeth sent me this term I had never heard before. I think it's like one of the words of the year from last year, 2022, um, permacrisis that so many folks in America are living in a perma crisis. And that feels so apt. It, I saw that word and I was like, dang, I wanna be living in a permaculture reality, but I'm living in a perma crisis reality. And I can see in my head all of, you know, I can like see the matrix, right? Like all of the ways we should tweak the code and change things to make our system able to serve us and not serve profit, right? So that we can care for each other, not line the pocketbooks of CEOs. And yet those of us that are mired in these inefficient systems that are dragged down, that are exhausted from the hypervigilance are the ones who can see the need for systemic change but have no resources to make the systemic change happen. When you don't have to worry about paying bills, you have time to think. That makes you extremely dangerous. The system is designed for us to never reach that level. If you're always in survival mode, you'll never have the time or the energy to maximize your full potential. And I've really, I've really been thinking about that a lot, um, that term permacrisis running through my head about, you know, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but it does, it does make you um, think, like, is there some element at which they, whatever the nebulous they is you want to blame, blame it on, want to keep you in a state of permacrisis so that you can't question the system, so that you can't make changes that will improve your quality of life and make the incredibly rich a little bit less rich, so that you can use resources to care for communities and the planet, families, neighbors, yourself, but instead keep you so tired that you don't have any energy to organize you don't have any energy to see beyond the tip of your nose. You can't work toward greater systemic change because all of your time and energy and financial resources are consumed with combating the inefficiencies in the system. I don't know how permaculture can address those things, but I know that I talk a lot on this channel about when I see a problem, I don't see the problem as individuals who are, you know, making errors in their choices. I don't see the problem as, you know, as individuals who are struggling in their jobs. I don't see the problem as individuals who don't have access to a more sustainable choice in their purchases, right? I see the problem as systemic problems that we are all forced to operate within. You're so busy trying to untangle yourself from all of the constraints and burdens that you have so you can reach up and put on your own oxygen mask. You can't reach over and help put your friend put on theirs, much less you can't fix the fact that the plane is going down. You can't go change the, you know, the mechanical problem that is causing your plane to crash in the first place. And I think that is a perennial sadness that I have. What is the way that we can enact systemic change when we are so mired in a broken system that we can't even handle our day-to-day -day problems? So I don't mean to be a downer here. I tend to be a bit of an optimist in general, uh, always hoping for the best solution, but I just don't, I don't see a way forward. So what is the way that we as people who are interested in earth care, people care and fair share, and want to transform systems can help enact real systemic change? What is the path forward for us? 
what is the way that we get ourselves breathing room so that we can look beyond what is happening right in front of us and look at making large scale changes. Um, I mentioned in a recent video that I have been listening to the book More Than a Woman by Caitlin Moran, which is just so good. Um, she talks about this in one of her chapters where, you know, she's talking about how she got Botox and how the response that people gave is, well, why can't you work to change our culture so that we're okay with women having wrinkles and imperfect faces and sagging jawlines and, and we accept women aging women as just as beautiful and valid. And we accept women, no matter how they look, as just as beautiful and valid. And she's like, you know, dude, I'm just trying to like get out the door and take my teenager to her swim lessons or whatever. Like, I don't have the time or the energy to try and fix our entire culture. And in the meantime, I want to feel okay about myself. And so I'm making an imperfect choice to get Botox. And that really resonated with me because that's how I feel a lot of times when I have to make an imperfect choice about like, oh, I guess we'll get takeout tonight. You know, it's not really in the budget and I know that it doesn't really meet my sustainability goals or like, you know, I want to do something to help a neighbor and I just don't have the energy or the time because I'm so consumed with my own problems. I can't always live up to my ideals because I'm so freaking tired from the society that we live in, from the culture that we live in that is just unsustainable. So how do we change the society? How do we change the culture? How do we change all of that infrastructure, both in terms of how we run businesses and how we run our government, how we design our cities, how we design our healthcare, how we design our retirement, how we design our care for children and the elderly? How do we change all of those systemic things when we are completely depleted from having to exist in those broken systems in the first place? How do we get ourselves the bandwidth to make those changes? What do we do going forward? I don't have good answers. I'm hoping you all have some answers. I'm hoping you all have some insight. I'm not hopeless about it. I know that we can make systemic changes. I know that society tends to, to progress as we go along. Um, we tend to make positive changes overall for the quality of our life. Not necessarily the quality of the planet, unfortunately, but maybe we can work on that. The only things I know to do right now are vote um, in every election to support charitable causes with any extra pennies that I have that I feel are, are doing that kind of larger scale work. I'm not sure what else I can do right now at this phase of my life and with the resources that I have, but I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. How can we as permaculturists see beyond our own garden? How can we design from patterns to details? How can we look at the big patterns? How can we look at the tiny little details and see that they echo each other? The changes we make in our garden, we need to make in the broader society in order to push toward resilience, in order to increase the quality of life for each other, for ourselves, for our neighbors, for our children and their children. How do we do that? Thanks for listening to me ramble today. I will be back very soon for my permaculture garden here in Portland, Oregon. If you are interested in supporting the work of this channel, please check out my Patreon down below and the other ways that you could throw a couple of bucks at my PayPal and say thanks for the work that you do. For those of you that have been supporting me through Patreon or PayPal, thank you. I am woefully inadequate at replying. Um, again, completely drowning. I see the things that you say. I see the comments that you make and the very generous donations that you give. I'm just terrible at finding the time to sit down at my computer and respond to everybody, but know that your donations, your gifts are incredibly meaningful in the life of my family. And I thank you. I want to add here at the end, if you're thinking about using your energy toward making those larger systemic changes, toward thinking about how you can engage with your community and create a more resilient world, please take the time to care for yourself as well. Don't let your own well get depleted. Find time to engage with your garden, to engage with nature, to engage with those activities that recharge yourself. I want to leave you here with one of my favorite John Muir quotes. I am losing precious days. I am degenerating into a machine for making money. I am learning nothing in this trivial world of men. I must break away and get out into the mountains to learn the news. Please find time, however you can, to disengage from this broken system and get those opportunities to connect with the mountains, to connect with the plants and the animals around you and recharge.
Earth care, people care, and fair share includes caring for yourself so you can care for others. Thanks for watching today. I'll be back soon.